Hello everyone, <coughs> my name is Jakko Malkki and I'm going to talk about system level testing of a Pulsar based microservice application, which is what I did as a part of my master's thesis. So first a couple words about me. Uh, I'm Jakko Malkki. I'm a recent master's graduate in computer science from the University of Helsinki. Uh, long studies. I have worked part-time as a software developer at HSL, Helsinki Seudun Liikenne, in English Helsinki Region Transport, which is the public transportation authority for the Helsinki region in Finland. My passion is to use technology for solving real-world problems, and I think public transportation is a very good example of that. So first, a little bit about the background on this topic. I think most of you are already familiar with microservice applications already, as it's quite common to use microservices with Pulsar. But just in case, let's go through the basics first. So microservice application means that we have an application that consists of multiple small independent services. The services should do a small, small thing and be quite simple. Uh, services can be developed, deployed and tested independently. It's quite common to use different technologies for different types of services. For example, if we have some general type of backend service, we might use Java. And if we have something that needs more performance, we might use C++, for example. <coughs> it's also quite common to use different teams for developing different services. Testing microservices is easy when we are only testing single service because then we can test those services independently and use traditional tools and methods for testing. But what if we want to test the whole application? Then the situation gets a little bit more complex because, as I said, services can use different technologies, which means that we can't use tools that expect on using certain technologies. For example, we can't use a testing framework that assumes that everything is written in Java. Services can also have dependencies, for example, in this case, Pulsar, which we also need to take account of when doing testing. There's also a lack of tooling that is specific for microservices. For example, if we need to debug the applications that are running on container platforms, there's not really any good tools available for that. And one quite specific thing is that we need to orchestrate the services and their dependencies for testing. So we need to set up all the services with some specific configuration so that we can test them. All right, so then about the system that we are testing, it's called transit data and it handles real time public transportation data. Transit data is built on top of Pulsar. Uh, it consists of roughly 30 microservices, which are mostly written in Java, also a few in Kotlin and a couple of newer ones are in JavaScript. We don't use any framework for this. Instead, we have our own shared library that contains things like definitions for the protobufs that the messages use. And the services are containerized with Docker and we use Docker Swarm for deploying them. Uh, the system works purely in the back end which means that we don't have any UI for this. Instead, transit data provides data for other services, such as journey planner, 
HSL mobile application and third party services such as Google Maps. Uh, the data that transit data handles can be something like vehicle positions or predictions on when the vehicle will arrive to a certain stop or textual information such as some stop being closed or some public transportation service being cancelled. Uh, here we have a diagram that shows, shows the architecture of transit data. You don't really have to understand it, it just shows the basic idea, which is that uh, services from these pipelines by reading from one topic and writing to another topic. Uh, services can be divided into roughly three categories. Uh, services that read data from some external source, such as a database or an MQTT broker. Then we have services that process data, for example, by converting the vehicle positions from one format to another. And then we have also services that publish the data to some external service. For example, we have a service that publishes vehicle positions in GTFS RT format to a blob storage where other applications such as Journey Planner can access that. Uh, the message rates in Pulsar for these topics can be anything from a couple messages a minute to uh, roughly 1500 messages per second. Then about how we have done testing. Uh, in practice, most of the testing we have done has been done manually. Uh, this has been done by uh, deploying transit data to its development environment and then accessing it through, for example, the journey planner so that we can verify that it provides some data to the journey planner that makes at least somewhat sense. We have a couple of unit tests, at least in most of the services. We also have a few integration tests, but before the uh, new tool for testing microservices, we didn't really have any system level tests. Uh, testing at system level has been quite difficult because the system is complex and the data that, it's, that it uses is complex. For example, to test the vehicle position feature, we first need to set up multiple services in certain order. And also the data needs to be in a certain format that resembles real world conditions. For example, the timestamps and the vehicle speeds in the vehicle position messages need to make sense so that the services can process them correctly. And because we have no graphical user interface, we can't use tools that do the testing through the UI. Then the main part of this presentation, which is the new microservice testing tool that I created as a part of my master's thesis. The tool is a generic tool for system level testing of microservices. It means that the tool doesn't make any assumptions about things such as which technologies are used in the services or which type of architecture <coughs> the application uses. One of the main focuses of the tool is to <coughs> make sure that the test code and its configuration can be reused easily. Uh, it's quite common for microservice applications to have some shared parts in the testing. For example, we need to set up the same services for most of the tests, so it makes sense to share the same configuration. And also the test code should be reused. For example, in our case, we have many test steps that check message rates either in Pulsar or MQTT. So we just need to write that code once and we can reuse it in different tests. 
the tool uses Docker for running the microservices. So in practice, it could test anything that can be packaged in a Docker container. Uh, the tool uses test containers library for running the containers and JUnit is used for the testing stuff such as assertions. The tool is written in Kotlin and this means that the test code must be written in a JVM compatible language. Here we have an example of the configuration that the tool uses. It's YML. It's heavily inspired by Docker Compose, as you can see on the left side. We have uh, three types of configuration files. One which specifies which services we have available. In this example, we have two services, which are Mosquito and Pulsar, of course. And then on the right hand side, we have configuration for the test steps, which are basically small parts that the tests are composed of. For example, here we have a one test step that starts listening to an MQTT broker and then other steps that <coughs> check that the message rate on the MQTT broker is correct and one test, test steps that prints the Pulsar stats statistics so that it's easier to debug what's happening in the tests. The test steps can also take parameters, which makes reusing them more easy. Here uh, I have an example on how we used this tool with transit data. We placed the test code in its own repository and then we had GitHub Actions, with, which executes tests once a day and also when new commits are pushed to the <coughs> test repository. And when GitHub Actions runs the tests, we get the results that tests either passed or failed and we get the lists of which specific tests failed and which passed. <coughs> Uh, the idea was to integrate this tool to a deployment pipeline, which would make sure that the tests are executed before services can be deployed to production. But this was not possible due to the way our pipeline was set up. So instead, we just simply used Timer to make sure that the tests get run at least every now and then. Then finally, about the results of the thesis. <coughs> Using the new tool for testing transit data had some benefits. Most notably, uh, we could create automated end-to-end -end tests, which was definitely an improvement over the previous situation when we had to do testing manually. It was also easier to handle test data programmatically. For example, in many test cases, we had a large JSON payloads, which were easier to create programmatically than trying to manually make sure that the long JSON text is in correct format. It was also easier to test certain difficult cases. For example, when there was a new Metro extension opening, we had to test that the service that creates estimates for the Metro still works. Uh, when using the new tool, it was quite easy to modify existing data from production, which resembled the situation where the new Metro was running, and then we could verify that it works. If we didn't have the tool, we would have had to test this manually and it would have been quite difficult to feed the test data into the development environment. It was also quite easy to create new tests because parts from the existing tests could be reused easily. There was some learning curve 
to creating the tests, but once you have created a couple of tests, creating new ones is quite easy. Some of the challenges we had was that many of the services were not designed to be testable. For example, we had uh, one service which made assumptions about the type of database it uses and in the test environment we had to use a different type of database than in production. Also creating complex test data was quite tedious. Again, if we have some complex uh, JSON object, it, but it's quite difficult to create even if doing programmatically. It would have been better if there was some way to access data from production and easily use that in the tests. Also, as the tool doesn't have access to the internal state of the application, it's quite difficult to debug if the tests are failing. For example, we had one, tests, one test where multiple services formed a pipeline and the test was failing and we had to figure out where the data flow was stopping. And because we can't access the internal state of the application, it was quite difficult to do. What we did for that was creating a test step that prints, prints out a message rate from each Pulsar topic, and then we could see which service didn't write to the Pulsar topic that it should write. Mm, one thing to note with the tool that it doesn't have a direct integration with Pulsar, <coughs> but it's possible to use test code that accesses Pulsar through its admin API. This was used in many test cases, for example, to check that the message rates in Pulsar are what they should be. And then finally, the conclusion. I think the most important thing I learned about doing this thesis is that testing microservices at system level is difficult. Often the system that we're trying to test is quite complex and also the data that it handles is complex. So creating tests becomes quite difficult. I recommend that you think about testing when designing the system. It's easier to create a testable system when the testing process has been thought about beforehand instead of trying to do testing later on. Uh, the new tool made testing at system level much easier and we are still using the tool for testing transit data, but uh, maybe don't use it for critical use cases. It, the tool still needs some improvements, for example, with usability. And while the tool was not designed specifically for Pulsar, it worked fine for testing transit data, the Pulsar-based application. It would have been better if the tool had direct integration to Pulsar, as it would made, make things such as accessing message contents easier. But this can be done quite easily with the tool by creating a test step that does what is needed. And a couple of links that you could check out if you're interested in this. The first one is about the thesis. Uh, the second one is the repository that contains code and documentation for the microservice testing tool. And the last one is the repository that contains code and configuration for transit data tests. If you want to see how the tool is used in practice, check out the transit data tests repository. All right. That's it. Thank you for listening.